Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's Hearthstone time. Alright, today's Tavern Brawl is a deck building one, and it's insane. So, I just want to let you know, I spent dust on this. I don't like spending dust, especially on class cards, especially on garbage cards, but just for you guys, I spent dust. Let's Don't pay too much attention to that stuff over there. This this one is a clockwork card dealer. It is somewhat, if you want it to be, somewhat deterministic what cards you are dealt. The first turn of the game you will dealt you will be dealt a one cost card, if you have one. On turn two you get a two cost card. On turn three you get a three cost card. This means if you only have one one cost card, that's the card you will be dealt. Unless it's already in your hand from your starting draw or something, or you've discarded it or whatever, but in which case you will get you know, any random card. This means that you can totally rig what you draw on certain turns, or on all the turns almost, except that eventually, I mean, there are, it, you can put sort of one thing in each casting cost. Eventually, you're gonna, the game's gonna end early, or you're gonna start drawing things of different casting costs, and it'll start getting more random. You, you have to have some doubles somewhere. You could have them all at the top, so you can control exactly what you get, but, I don't know. Uh, warlocks can do interesting things. I'm guessing that when they use their ability to draw cards, that's very different. So, I think I'm going to pitch all of these cards. I don't care about any of those cards. I have some extra cards in the level 3 slot, so I can get different things there. I know that I will get back my one-cost guy, assuming this works as described, because he's the only one-cost thing in my deck, is a zombie chow. Oh look, a zombie chow. I'm sure that many people may have planned it, assumed that they would be running into zombie chows and have a plan against it. Eh, it's a zombie chow. If they kill it early, they're gonna gain five life when they don't need to. I don't really care. Okay, that's a pretty funny matchup. So I could trade, and then he would gain five life, and we'd be back where we started. I'm actually gonna play my Annoyatron, who is a pretty much guaranteed card there. I'm going to try and do a little bit more damage so that maybe he still has some damage when the zombie chow dies. It's just for something to do. Since we are in a slightly, weirdly, semi-deterministic game from my point of view. Of course, I don't know what my opponent's going to do. If he draws cards from this, there will be pretty random cards. You could do crazy things, like the way you can rig your draw. Like, you could be a mage, you could make sure you start out with a mana worm, and then in turn two you make sure you have, like, a frost bolt or a flame cannon, and that should, like, give you some control there. He made, he has a, he has dark box, which is a good idea. I strongly considered getting me some, you know, things in that range. My three cost stuff, I have a whole bunch of random things. Some of them, the ogre boots, I'm just assuming the enemies are going to have big things out at this stage of the game, and they're going to have re powerful removal spells, and I thought, eh, the ogre boots got the extra hit points, it's a little bit, like, tougher to get rid of. Again, some classes like Warlock have a good 4 damage option that he could have, but if I get lucky, he might kill that for me. Here's here's what happens on turn 4, though. I crafted this stupid piece of crap, gain 10 mana crystals, discard your hand. So, this is the only 4 cost card in my deck. I will always draw this on turn 4. Now, that is there is a drawback, because it means I discard my entire hand. Losing your hand is pretty bad. It could mess up future determinacy in my game, for example. Uh, I'm going to use some of this extra mana to come through that guy. That's going to happen every game that I'm going to get that. Now I have no cards, though. My opponent has loads of cards. I have all this mana and nothing to spend it on. So I don't know how I could possibly... Maybe that was a stupid plan to, to Astral Communion on turn four every game. You can't, you, you can't get Innervate, I mean, you can put Innervate in your deck and you might draw it randomly from your starting hand, but you can't guarantee an Innervate because it's zero cost, there's no turn zero. But then, my only turn five cards draw me three cards. It gets a lot more random from here on. All the stuff that's six and up, I don't know what I'm going to get. Uh, I should probably save this guy for removal, but I won't, because I'm super overconfident in the fact that I have 10 mana, and I'm getting cards back. You don't. Some of my 6 mana stuff might draw me cards, too. Some of my, like, I've got lots of stuff that can potentially draw me additional cards. I also have just lots of big, fat, expensive cards. Like good old Kelly here. Call Kelly. 
Ooh, Void Caller. That's a pretty good four mana play to sort of break. And you've got a coin that you've been saving. I don't have any good use for the coin. That's part of why I have so many three cost guys, though. I could choose to skip in the Tron and play an extra three cost guy. Oh, the pilot is Sky Golem. He's pretty good. Um, concerned about what's going to come out of that guy, but I don't have too much control over it. So. We're just going to... I'm not going to play Kalthazad yet, because he's going to be vulnerable to whatever comes up there. I'm just going to start delivering the beats. For the wild. Yeah, I could kill that and trigger it prematurely. I'd rather not. There's a small chance that he might... He has some smaller demons in his deck, so this may well give him something that is not the gigantic demon he's hoping for. Again, he hasn't... He might have a gigantic demon from a starting hand. If he'd used this, he might have one, but he won't, you know, he can't have drawn any, because he's drawn a six cost demon, and then a seven cost, or whatever. Okay. So here's where we're gonna go, Kalfazad. I better find out what demon he's gonna get for this. Okay. Better kill that guy. Good to get worse. Hi. Now, he should have designed his deck to have some powerful removal by now, but I have quite an army here. And of course, I've got the lynch pit here with eight hit points. You've got to kill him before you can even progress. That doesn't quite kill him, so we got to do something else. Mortal Coil. This is going to turn into a game. Like, my advantage is not 100% unstoppable. I'm sure people will have a lot of, like, guaranteed kill cards that they draw at certain times. Okay. Oh, I've got some pretty good choices here. Ragnaros is pretty good. I think we're just going to go full Ragnaros. This thing doesn't guarantee kill him. I could Kung Fu him, I guess, but I'm going to take the chance. Because if I if Ragnaros hits him for 8, that's still pretty good. If it blows up his only guy, that's excellent. Yeah. I don't like spending dust, but this is pretty funny. We'll see how many other druids I run into, because this seems like an obvious strategy for me. You try and think of, what would you do if you could guarantee what you will draw on certain turns? If you can just rig your deck, totally, and this is pretty rigged deck sort of deal. Um, do I have lethal? I've got 10 plus 6, 7, yeah, it's not going to be lethal. What am I saying 10? 6, 12, 13, it's not lethal. So, we'll do that. Warlock, you play with magic beyond your understanding. Okay. I think I do play with magic beyond your understanding. When I Astral Communion on turn 4 guaranteed, draw 3 cards on turn 5 guaranteed. I only have 5 mana on turn 5, so it's after that that it starts getting silly. But I have to make sure I have some cheaper cards in my deck, because the fact that I'm just drawing all these big things later on isn't good enough if they cost more than half my mana. Like, there is a built-in drawback. Um, so I can just kill him, right? Yeah, big game hunter. That's one of my things. You, you're pretty dead. I had a handful of your dead. So we've seen how it's supposed to work out. We're going to try this a few more times. Partially to see what kind of interesting plans other people have. I don't know that that guy had much of a plan. His plan was like, I'm a warlock! Yes. He was a warlock. But I'm... I can't be the only one who's trying to engineer a ridiculous strategy. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, too, because I don't necessarily have, like, I actually have some slow turns in there. The turn four, yeah, that's impressive, but it's slow. The turn five, I'm, I can, there isn't that much stuff in my deck other than a bunch of three cost cards that I can draw to make it, like, work out. Again, I'm pitching these, I'd rather get some more of the three-cost guys so that I have some choices. I have the Arcane Golem in here, because he can kill something if I need to. And I'm assuming if other people are trying to rig their plays like I am, 
that one extra mana is going to make a lot less difference than normal. If you're playing, you're planning on playing your three mana draw on turn three and your four mana draw on turn four, etc., because that's what you're getting, you've rigged it, then I'm not sure that one mana is going to help you as much as it otherwise would. Interesting that he's tracking in this format. That just seems like a weird setup, but okay. I could Kung Fu his guy and kill it. I'm just going to play Anoetron now. Anoetron is fine. I guess I should probably have killed that with my guy anyhow, but eh. Interesting he's playing with so much, like, random drawing stuff. Like, it's weird. Tracking's not random, I guess, but... Okay. It does make me wonder if he has, like, designed his deck for this one. Let's see what secret that is. Really? It's not even a bear trap. Like, if he's just going for kind of rushy type thing, bear trap would be pretty interesting. Ah. Um, this guy's probably going to die, but I don't want to give him the extra mana, because this opponent actually seems like he might use it. So he's probably going to get sniped. No. Okay, hold on. So what has he got? He has a snake basket? He could be sitting up for a crazy, snaky sort of play. Oh, is he ever. Crazy, snaky play it is. I have a lot of hip guys out there to eat the damage, so it could be worse. He's going to be there to kill that thing. He'll probably get through. I'm, I'm just going to try it. It's fine. Yes, you can snake back it and get lots of shots. I am losing a Nourish. If I had both Nourishes in my hand, that would be really bad. That would mess with my whole thing. Then again, I would draw some random card on turn 5. A lot of my cards are big and expensive and would actually do fine, so it shouldn't be the end of the world, but... Yeah, whatever. By the way... Should rewatch that bit in Aladdin so I could quote Jafar. The universe is mine to control, to command. We'll see if he's got a tiny little living space set up for me. Now the game begins. You have a lot of low cost stuff in your deck. I have a lot of gigantic fat things. They're gonna start coming at you soon. Him again. Yeah, that works. Again, yeah, maybe I should save him for something better than hitting for 3 damage, but eh, he might use his weapon to get rid of it. And I have stuff I can do. I am not bereft of solutions. Let's put it that way. He's like, why do you have 10 mana? And I have 5 mana. And I'm still, what, what gets me is how I'm ahead on health at this point in the game, because my deck isn't really designed especially for that, like, winning up till now. Yeah. No crazy beast card drawing for you. More crazy flame dying for you. I, I want to see if he surrenders now. I wouldn't think so. But I would not be surprised if some people would see what's going on and surrender. Oh, you've got Big Game Hunter. Aw, oh, that's nice. Ow, pig. You need to draw some cheaper stuff. Nope. He's okay, though. Um, do do do. I could do this and maybe draw something else, but... Eh. Well, those guys kill him pretty easily, but uh, I'll, I'll just... Well, no, they don't kill him anywhere near as easily. I could do this and draw two more cards. I might wish I'd gotten the health, because my opponent's going to rush me down pretty quick. But I also might draw some of my three-cost guys. Ah, oh, yay. It's uh, and I'm glad I have that in case things start going downhill. I can take damage very fast from his cell. Put this apple on your head. Oh, there is this trick of, like, being able to cast two things per turn with my massive amounts of mana. Although, of course, if they're drawing three cards, I could draw really big cards that I could play with. These guys are pretty solid. Even when you got all the legends and stuff like that, this is a pretty decent thing to put out at any given time if you're worried that things might not be going uh, completely your way. 
Hi, I'm big. I'm looking for like more of a defensive Alexstrasza, I think. But now maybe I won't need it as much. Now maybe it'll just be a crappy Alexstrasza. The kind where you don't play her because it's not helping. Oh, that's a pretty serious guy. Yeah. The Ferian. So you notice it gets a bunch of free damage out of that guy. How much do I care? I don't know. I do care about the misdirect that that could be. I'm a little worried about that. I'm going to see what happens, though. Freezing crap. Okay. That's not the end of the world. I'm just going to play him again. Whatever. Successfully freezing crap him. Bonk. Now my opponent has full mana now, too. But he has a lot of inexpensive things in his deck. So he is going to be able to do two things per turn. I don't know if he's going to be able to do the same kind of big things that I do. The beasts obey me. Oh, that guy could be rough. What does he get? Yeah, he gets pretty mediocre. He can do a lot of damage out of this guy, though. He's got all the death rattle stuff. I almost put in the three mana death rattle hoser. That two, three taunt that gets plus one, plus one for every death rattle on the opposing side. Seemed like something that could definitely be useful. And also having a taunt in that slot. Seems pretty good. And maybe I should go put her back if I'm going to keep doing this, but... I don't know. There's some more shots. He's hoping to get lucky. Oh, can he hit it? No. Okay. I'm so glad that second shot missed. That would have been annoying. He's going to unleash one hound. Okay. Um, he may have me. I don't have the kind of mass removal I need to get rid of all that crap. That's it. I already used Ragnaros, did I? Yeah, I did. Hmm, I might be in trouble. Um, I can't do this and Alex Straza. How much stuff can I kill? How much am I just going to die? Because he's got 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, 19. That is pretty fatal, what he's got out there. I don't have the taunt now. I don't think I can do it. Like, not die. I think he is actually going to win. Nobody said my deck was perfect. I just it does something what? stupid and obnoxious. But yeah, Alex Ross could heal me to fifteen. It does nothing to stop me from dying. I could blow up. Like if I blow this up, that's four attack. But then he's going to get some back. This is pretty sad. You would have been useful beforehand, it's a bit late now. I think I'm just dead. Yeah. He's got he's got twelve just from the minions and he can shoot me too. So boo. All that power and I have failed. Problem is, like, I want the Starfall in here to do, like, two damage AoE, but it conflicts. I can't have the swipe because it conflicts with my uh, plan also. So, definitely can go wrong. That's no, that was no fun. That guy had, like, no crazy strategy, though, right? Like, what, where, where are the people trying to, like, do deterministic computer programming of their deck? What, what's wrong with these people? I expect these, like, perfectly plotted thing, and he's going all, like, all these random things. Not Damn, Mage. Yet. Mage is definitely yeah. going to do stuff. I was thinking you try and have, like, a deterministic first three turns of the Mage, have, like, a million things in level four, and then also guarantee sort of, like, your, level, your five mana play, etc. be very tempting. Is it worth having an extra Noyatron? I'd still rather try and have more of the, like, three cost guys. Although maybe I shouldn't be pitching so aggressively because I could get a bunch of uh, nourishes in my hand and screw me up. Oh, I've got some choices. Then again, having all the three cost guys early might screw me up in other ways because it means I'm not going to draw them later, right? So I should probably not be messing with my starting hand so much. Oh well. Again, if you don't have something in a certain mana slot, it'll just give you something else. It'll give you a normal random card. So, what have you got, mage? What to do? 
What? This is a lot of thinking for someone whose first few turns should be deterministic, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how else you would do this. It's the, that's the whole point of this thing, is to try and come up with a way for you your match to go. You're playing chess against your opponent before your opponent's even there. That's the plan. So your plan was to go mechs and stuff, and this guy's going to wreck it, because his not very impressive power is still enough to kill that guy. This guy is pretty good if she has, like, a big mech or something. I should be able to get rid of it. We got... I was trying to think of something with secrets. There are a million secrets at three costs, though, and they cost the same as the 4-3 guy that gives you a free, lets you play the secret for free. So I was kind of annoyed by that. But having the... Uh, having a... Oh, you're going something, too. Okay. But, yeah, having the... My brain is just... I'm too easily distracted. Okay, so you've got that guy. Good for you. Yeah, but the... Having the scientist, the 2-2, two -two, who when he dies will give you a secret for free, that's fantastic, and I can see trying to work with that in this format. Now, Paladin have a lot of, like, one-cost secrets. I don't know... You want to start drawing those later in the game or something? But then again, you know, if I had the Mysterious Challenger, I would totally make, like, a Paladin deck. Maybe I should craft one of those. Because on turn six, you're going to get a guy who's going to play one of every secret. You could also just play with all the secrets. You're going to draw one of them early on, but most of them will probably still be sitting around there in your, like, deck. Um, try and kill this. Probably won't work. No. Okay. Darn. And a natural community. Yep. All right, I keep forgetting I can come through. Out of this. Yeah. Maybe I should be playing with like an inspire thing, like a turn three. I don't think I. I don't know if I have any three cost guys with inspire. Are there any three cost guys? Well, oh, there's there's the. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't be able. To, I, like I could have the. The, the Drake that gets to attack twice if you inspire, like just for that turn. So then I could do this and have like the two attacks. That would be pretty cool. Let's draw three cards. Womp. Alright, not not ideal. Uh, we're we're gonna do this anyway, even though it's taking no point of the mana. Being generous. I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling like these people have just have realized what you can do with this thing. You can make sure you get good stuff. That's good stuff. But I don't know. Um, Nick Bear Cat's pretty cool, but uh, Iron Bark Protector is good. Although, uh, if I do this, he'll kill the ooze. Then I won't have him later for removal. So that's maybe not as good. Let's just do this. Bear cat could get me some much needed, like cheap spells to throw in in between my behemoths. It may only be like half or a third of the card sometimes, but yeah. You put together like a pretty nasty rush. I'd just be worried about disruption from my op your opponent. Your opponent cannot disrupt my plan. Now they can. Apparently, swarming is a pretty good way to defeat my plan. I should have like the faux shredder in here. I don't know. I don't have the faux shredder, but he would be a good one. He could have, if I could get him out at some point, he could have reduced the numbers that my hunter, that the hunter was building up there. I may not have a good way to get rid of this slime. I may actually have to attack it with him, which is sad. Oh, that's sad. All right, let's see what I get. I mean, I could play him and draw a couple cards. I might get a three cost guy that would take that out, but probably not. He would take it out, but after I've attacked. I probably should have done him instead of this thing, but oh well. Really blaze. Oh, I'm gonna take the damage to come for this guy. Why not? He's gonna die. Another spare purge. Not really worth the damage to him, but it's what you do. 
Another thing that I would, uh, yeah, maybe not work out so well. What was I thinking? Oh, whatever. Shoot him. Still, I'm doing okay with this. Kill for Zad. Okay, um, I could do this for hit points. I think I'm just gonna play him though, he's fine. I've got a handful of spare parts, but I'm not wasting any on him when my opponent is likely to polymorph or lava lance him. He's very flammable. Only more boar, okay. Are you gonna then kill the boar or do I actually get a boar? That's not cool. Justice true her, a little worrisome, but okay. Now her ability does two damage. Ow. This can kill her though, so that could be worse. I can also leave her alive, just sort of freeze her and stuff. Um, I could just play Kel'Thuzad Kel and keep getting back the charge boars, so that's pretty good. Is that really what I want to do, though? I think I'm going to freeze her. I'm going to get some more spells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. I won't be discarding from that, so yeah. Yeah, I would get the boar back. It's just a boar, though. It's not that special. Doesn't come back until the end of the turn, so don't get like infinite charging this. No, it's this one. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I like that. She can blow them up for two mana, but that's like once per turn. Um, setting up the uh, trying to set up the mage and spire combos might be a good, might be one thing to do. You know you're going to get that Caldera Drake at turn 6. You go at the Maiden at turn 4. Or you could save her in your hand, potentially. Okay, Boar did die. But that was not unforeseen. Uh, the counter spell would be pretty good to have out and mess up my opponent. There's max mana, so that part would be okay. I should save him until after Kel'Thuzad is out, though. Let's let's just play Kel'Thuzad. Why not? Soldiers of the cold dark, obey the call of Kel'Thuzad. Now let's burn a. I don't have enough mana to do what I want to do with all those, so that's not going to work. So let's just. Come through. For the wild. If Kel'Thuzad's out there. He can now be killed. He will probably be killed. If for some reason he survives, though. The Arca I'm going to have a good turn with the Arcane Golem and stuff. Get things. Get it back. I mean, she's got to get through the time. She needs to blow him up with a spell. She's probably not getting through the respawning layers of mirror images. Mm. He's got greater mirror image now. Got that. Start working on him. Have you got a fireball? Because if you finished, you got a fireball. You have a not fireball. That is excellent. I'll have to use one of these guys to heal him later. Oh man. Alright. I want to get her to counterspell. I want to get her an arcane golem. And I want to kill this and see what pops out. Yeah, that's okay. Um, tell you what, I'm going to kill her because I can. Plus one attack. Die. Three for six. And I could Kung Fu or I could Armor Plate Kel'Thuzad. Let's, let's, let's give him an extra hit point, just in case you draw the fireball. Respawn. They're not like the ultimate army of respawning, but... Free guys is free guys. Because Kel'Thuzad. Oh, your flame strike got counterspelled by your counterspell from Nefarian. Nefarian says hi. He says surrender. <laughs> yep. So as you can see, this is a pretty fun, cool tavern brawl. Am I doing the best thing with it? I don't know. I think even this strategy, there has to be a better way to do it. You have to be able to think of some 
smarter arrangement of stuff. Uh, my early games seem to be doing pretty well against people's random early game. I'd figure out better what to do with these stuff afterwards, though, because it's got this problem that you're going to keep drawing things that cost six or more. It's going to be hard to do two per turn. And if you're just drawing a six mana thing on turn six and casting that, and a seven mana thing on turn seven and casting that, you're doing mostly the same thing as your non ten mana opponent. So is it really that much better? No, it's more like gimmicky and fun, but it is kind of gimmicky and fun. But yeah, so this is a fun tavern brawl. I might do more of this. I might build a different deck and try that out too. We'll see. But. They're going to have a hard time coming up with a better, well, with a more interesting one than that. For next week. If you enjoyed this, please activate the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonet Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.